I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Hi there. I didn't see you people come in. Normally I can intuit these things, but the atmosphere in this place has just completely ruined my abilities. <laughs> you don't mind if I sit down, do you? Yeah, I didn't think anyone else would be joining you. We don't look very sociable. No offense. My name is Harvest. My earthbound name is Karen. I'm required to tell you that. I have corrected it on my name tag though. My name is Harvest. It's, don't actually touch me. I'm just motioning to you in a friendly manner. It's just a gesture. And you as well. No, don't touch me. Thank you. They offer hand sanitizer here, but well, we all know the truth about hand sanitizer. Oh, you don't know. Oh, well. Oh, bless your heart. I'm sure you do your best. Well, actually, um, no, you should not use hand sanitizer. Um, well, there are a whole wealth of reasons why you shouldn't use hand sanitizer. First of all, I am not a big fan of using things that you did not craft yourself. Um, it actually goes against my philosophy to be employed by this corporation at this point. Um, I'm, I'm, of course I'm going to take your order. We have more important things to deal with right now. Okay? I, I don't think it will hurt you to, to wait a little bit to get your meal. <clears throat> I think you find, though, that selective fasting is very good for the spirit. It's, it's so, it's, it's cleansing. It's, it, it gives your life a new purpose. It can, can redirect you in ways that you, you know what, don't, actually don't worry about it because I, I don't feel like talking about it anymore because you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't understand anyway. Um, <clears throat> I have to be here, unfortunately, for the time being, for my Fisher's sake. He is my my spouse, my helpmeet. Um, unfortunately, we are a little low on funds at the moment. Uh, these situations are not comfortable for me. I don't really care about money so much, but every now and then it, it becomes, you know, it, Fisher feels the need to communicate to me that money does matter. I'm starting to worry about him. I am worried about him because I think he's becoming very materialistic. Well, he was down in Argentina. He was trying to save the endangered Argentinian sand flea. But he sent me a note the other day. Um, well he intuited it to me. We, we are able to communicate on the same astral plane. He communicated to me that he needs money um, because I'm getting there. He has become aware of this terrible, terrible thing. There is, there is a field mouse and the name field mouse is a bit of a misnomer because it actually doesn't live in a field. It lives on cruise ships. And this field mouse is from down in Guam and it is becoming terribly endangered. There's a chance that there might not be any more. And he has vowed not to give up until he has searched every cruise ship to ensure the safety of the Guam field mouse. And when he told me that, it just... It just filled my heart with joy and I, I, how could I say no to that? So of course I'm going to do what I can to help the Guam field mouse. So I am now employed by this corporation. Um, this is actually my first day. I'm, I'm very underwhelmed. I think I'm supposed to say I'm excited. They tell me that customer service matters. Um, but my interpretation of customer service may veer off a little bit from theirs. See, to me, to be a server, to be a servant, if you will, has more to do with directing you in the right path. Um, you and your, your friend here, um, tell me, 
Have you ever been here before? Have you been to this place before? Okay. All right. And you chose to come back. Now, what about you? You have never been to this establishment? Oh my goodness. So coming here was your idea, I guess. Well, the way I look at it, and it is very unfortunate. The way I look at it is, it's kind of like getting children hooked on cigarettes. You know, you, you, um, you use your influence to bring them in. And I'm sure someone probably did it to you. You know, they, they show you this bright gleaming establishment with its promises of garlic laden goodness and overpriced beverages and, and you just couldn't help yourself. And then you came in and then see what you don't know is they put chemicals in the food here to, um, it's almost like an addiction and it makes you come back over and over and over to consume more and more of that chemical. Oh, nobody knows about it. It's a secret. They keep it very well, very well hidden. It's, it's a cover up. You know why they put so much garlic on everything? That's to mask the taste of the chemical that causes the addiction. Exactly. See, you didn't know that. Well, the way I understand it, they have another version of the chemical that is tasteless and colorless, and they add that to the beverages, but it's more expensive. So they use the less expensive addictive chemical in the foods, in the breads, the pastas, all these disgusting things that you people like here. Yeah. And I'm sure that this person told you it was going to be wonderful. Right. Well, you'll get hooked on it. Just, yeah, you'll both be, uh, you'll both be addicts. And, and unfortunately, there's no rehab for that. Although I am working on clearing out some space in my garage. I'm kind of toying with the idea of doing um, a chain restaurant recovery center uh, for addicts like yourself. And from looking at you, you eat a lot of, of uh, fast food and chain restaurant, fast casual type stuff. Well, I can tell. I mean, I can just, I can just tell by your skin and in your slouch. Yeah. But working here is exhausting. It's just exhausting. I mean, I have to wear synthetic materials and I think it is causing me to become just absolutely fatigued. It is draining all of my positive energy. It is, it's just taking it out of me and sending it out into the universe. I don't, I don't wear synthetics. No. The only reason I'm doing this is because of the Guam field mouse. But I'm that passionate about it. I mean, I just learned that this animal existed, but I'm very passionate about it. Yes. Oh, you want to order? Oh, I don't believe you've heard a word I've said. It's almost like you expect to you expect to just come in here and eat something. You know, sometimes in life there are learning experiences and maybe it wouldn't hurt you to, you know, pay attention to that every now and then. You know, broaden your mind a little bit, not just your hips. It's just a thought. You know, I'm always telling people that. I had it printed up on some business cards, but I think I've given them all out. See, that's... My motto is, don't be bitter, be better. Don't be bitter, be better. That's, well, you know, that's why I'm here. That's why I was put on this earth. It was to help people like yourself find your way. Because, well, living in this society, it's very easy to be distracted. I mean, there are a plethora of excuses. You know, like you might say, well, I have a job and I'm busy. Or you might say, um... I don't know, eating keeps me busy all day and I, I don't have time for self-improvement or broadening my, my horizons or anything. I mean, I don't, I don't know what your reason would be. Maybe you spend too much time watching television. See, I personally never watch television. I don't even own a television. <laughs> Did you know that? I don't even own a television. <laughs> I'm sure you're the same way. <laughs> you're not. 
let him explain why you're here. Okay, what did you want to know? Okay, if you've been here before, you know that basically the menu just consists of different types of pasta, tomato sauce, garlic, and different combinations. It's all basically the same dish. So, you want to know what now? The classic recipes? Okay. I'm going to read this to you, although it hurts me to read this because I speak perfect Italian, um, but I can't read this that way because I didn't make this paper and it, it actually kind of hurts my eyes to look at it. I make all my own paper. <laughs> you don't make your paper? Of course you don't. You know, I'm running into more and more people like you. You just, do, do you do, do you have a garden? Of course you do. Um, you know what? Don't even answer that because if you say you don't, I'm just going to have to go home for the day and I, I think it would look bad if I left early on my first day, but I think it would make me physically ill to hear you say that. Let me tell you what we have for the classic recipes. We have lasagna, classico, layers of pasta, it gives you cancer, meat sauce and mozzarella ricotta, parmesan and romano cheese. Then we have the five cheese ziti al forno. It is ziti pasta in a five cheese marinara sauce baked with a layer of melted Italian cheeses. And then we have spaghetti with meat sauce. Traditional meat sauce. You know, I can't do this. I can't, I can't. I was told to be chipper. I was told to smile, but I cannot. I feel like I'm reading your death warrant to you. I mean, it doesn't matter what you pick. It's all going to kill you. I mean, you do you not see the problem here? This I was just telling my little the other day, Harvest oh, Haven. I was telling Haven the other day, my little. Well, she's 131 months old, and she's very advanced for her age. I don't know where she gets it. I was telling her the other day, I said, this world, everybody is so misguided. Everybody is so deceived. We are living in a world swimming with chemicals and everyone just happily dives right in. I mean, you, you probably dive right into it every day. You what? You want something to drink? Okay. Well, what, what do you want? What would you like? Well, you know, places like this all have the same stuff. Blah, 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 toxins, blah, 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 carcinogens, blah, blah, blah. So just tell me what you want. Water, that actually is a wonderful choice. And you are very lucky that I am your server. Would you also like water? You don't want anything. Well, I have just the thing for you. See, um, now they do have water here. I saw it personally and I smelled it and it smelled like chemicals to me. It did. Now, fortunately for you, I anticipated this ahead of time. Before I came in today, I went out to my reverse ionization tank and I got some of my own personal water to bring. And if it's popular, I may start doing it every day. So I have my own water. It is, it is 100% pure, it is organic, it is completely gluten-free, and it is vegan. This is very healthy water, okay? I'm going to give you some water, but see, this is much better. Well, okay, get the, well, there may be stuff floating in it, um, but honestly, that just adds fiber. And you're not going to get much fiber from anything you order here. You're going to get lots of starch, that chemical I was telling you about, uh, sugars, high fructose corn syrup. You're not really going to get any fiber. So any any uh, solid material that you see in here, uh, don't worry about that. That just adds a little bit of extra fiber to your, I'm sure, pitiful diet. So, Oh, no, no. No, no, no. We will not. I'm going to leave this on the table here for you. We will not be using their glasses. No, no, no. I bring my own glasses. I make these myself. I fire them in my own kiln. 
the the color oh that is a dye that I make myself we won't worry about what I make it out of it's totally fine I drink out of these all the time I make everything with my own hands and Haven is very good at making pottery herself she's just started making some pottery jewelry it's beautiful and Guy, my other little Guy, no, Guy, at the back of the throat, Guy. I offer classes on Tuesdays at 1045 if you need help pronouncing it. He wove the most beautiful coffee pot the other day on our loom. I tell you, he just made, we have a loom and we make things on our loom. Of course, only really talented people can do it. Um, but we are a very, very creative, very talented family. Um, here's your water. Here you go. Are you sure you wouldn't like some water? No? Okay. Well, that's fine. Um, so, what do you want to order? Do you know what you want? Do, would you like some of those little cancer sticks? I mean, bread sticks? You want breadsticks? Well, I'm required to bring them to you. If I don't accidentally drop them first. Okay. Um, well, you, surely you want something to drink. You want something with lots of syrupy sweetness, I bet. I thought so. Sweet tea. That sounds about right. You look like somebody that would drink sugar water. <laughs> Bless your heart. Um, yes, it does. The spaghetti with meat sauce, you know, that's really disgusting. That's, I mean, I don't know how you eat that. Have you eaten it, but have you had, have you ever had spaghetti? Ugh. I've heard it's really bad. I don't personally eat it. Um, I don't make that, so I don't eat that. That's gross. We have chicken parmigiana. Parmesan breaded chicken breast fried and topped with marinara sauce and mozzarella cheese served with spaghetti. You don't want that. No, no, trust me. You don't want that. Um, no, that's, uh, I'm not going to get it for you. So you're not going to order that fettuccine Alfredo. It is Parmesan cream with a, a Parmesan cream sauce with a hint of garlic. Oh, please. We don't do a hint of garlic on anything. You know it's going to be loaded with this stuff. And it's served over fettuccine. Now that looks like flatworms on a corpse. I won't be bringing you that either. And here's a possibility. Eggplant parmigiana. It's lightly breaded eggplant, fried and topped with a marinara sauce. Uh, mozzarella and Parmesan cheese served with spaghetti. Now, I don't care for the spaghetti part, so I would, I will not take that. Um, I will scrape that off the plate before I bring it to you. I don't mind bringing you eggplant. Um, well, see, you're in luck. I snuck in some that I grew in my own garden. So, you're going to be getting, okay, you're both going to get eggplant, Parmigiana. Oh, no, you are. You're allergic to eggplant. No, you're not actually allergic to eggplant. Let me let me explain something to you. I'm gonna bring out two of these. Let me explain something to you about allergies. Um, and this this is this is another common misconception. See, when I told you I was your server, you know, people come out and your your server comes out and they say, Hey, I'm so and so, I'll be taking care of you today. Um when I said I was your server, what I actually meant was I would be bringing you out a hot, steaming plate of knowledge. And that's what we're doing here today. Allergies, I just, I'll just put it to you very plainly. I don't want to use big words because I'm afraid it would confuse you. Allergies are a myth. Um, allergies are actually not real. Now, what you have been experiencing possibly, now what, what alleged symptoms do you think you have when you consume eggplant? Oh, your throat closes up? See, I've heard of that anaphylactic shock thing, and um, that's, it's just not real. It's, it's actually not a real thing. So, um, the problem isn't the eggplant. The problem is your body 
is screaming for real nutrients. And I'm guessing that you've spent probably your entire life consuming anything but nutritious food. And it's not really your fault. I mean, you know, it probably started when you were little and you weren't given the proper nutrition. You were probably given disgusting formula and jarred baby food because it's just too much work to feed the littles what they need. That's what I hear all the time, all the time. I accost women in the parking lot with their babies and that's what they tell me before they call the cops. It's just an excuse. So your body, your body is just trying to get your attention. When your throat closes up and you can't breathe and you start to see the light at the end of that tunnel, that is your body's way of saying, hello, I need nutrients. I need nutrients. It's kind of throwing a little bit of a temper tantrum. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's not the eggplant. You're actually not allergic to eggplant at all. It is the chemicals on the eggplant. It is whatever it's cooked with, however it's prepared. Um, you look like you'd probably eat a lot of processed food, a lot of unnatural substances, you know, lots of bad fat. I mean, you just look like, you know, you would I mean, nothing personal, nothing personal, but I notice your skin is kind of sallow, you know, yours too, and you have, you know, you just look tired. That's because of what you eat or don't eat. Um, so the good thing is the eggplant that you're going to be having today was grown by me and I kind of snuck in the back and replaced all that nasty fake eggplant with real eggplant. It's been grown and nourished with my two hands. And Haven and Guy, of course, they help out. And it's going to be wonderful. I, I, I want to be here when you take your first bite. I want to see. I want to see the look on your face when you realize how incorrect you've been all these years about your so-called allergy. It's actually very exciting. <laughs> I love this. Um, I've, ever, I've never actually gotten to do this before, but I want to be there when you take your first bite. You know, working here may not be so bad. I, I get to experience some great things. So, um, okay, I'm going to put in your order for the eggplant. Um, and your, your disgusting tea, okay. So, um, is there any, anything? Oh, no. I, I'm afraid I can't put that away. What is that? Where have you guys been today? You went to the baby expo? At, at where? The baby expo? See, now I can't, I can't abide. I can't agree with that. I can't, um, I don't actually like you two anymore. See, I didn't think you would do that kind of thing. So you have a little, is that right? Why didn't you mention that to start with? I don't, I don't know how to feel about people who don't start their conversations by talking about their littles. So you occupy the same space as a little and you did, you're just now mentioning it? We've been talking for quite a while. Well, if you have a little, what were you doing at a, a baby expo? See, any real mommy would know that you don't go to a place that sounds like a boat show. You don't go to a place with a format that is the same as the one they used to show off boats or RVs. That's, that's blasphemy. That's, that's vulgar. Well, let me see your little goodie bag there. I, I, I no, I have never been to a baby expo. I don't need to go to know what they're about. <laughs> no, no. Everything you need to know about your little is in here and up here. You don't need other people telling you how to take care of your little. You can do everything by yourself. Oh, you absolutely can. See, those are just excuses. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, I have medical problems. Oh, this. Oh, that. Oh, I have to work. See? excuses just excuses you know when 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 you really care about your little 
You don't need excuses anymore. You don't need expos. You don't need pediatricians. You don't you don't need daycare. You don't need schools. When you really love your baby, you don't need any of that stuff. Incidentally, did you know that my little haven could spell pediatrician by the time she was 24 weeks old? I don't know where she gets it. She won her first spelling bee when she was 32 weeks old. I know, I'm so proud. Hmm. Let me see your bag. I'm very curious. I'm morbidly curious. Of course, I'm going to have to go scrub my hands after I touch it. Um, oh, no, it's not about the flu season. And the flu is another myth, but that is a discussion for another day. Well, all right. Permanent member. Please tell me I'm reading this wrong. Permanent member of the Sisterhood of Motherhood. <gasps> I don't have my soap. It's from Similac. Do you know what Similac is? It sounds like crack because it's that dangerous. This is a Similac bag talking about being a member of the Sisterhood of Motherhood. Oh, that's that's that goes beyond repugnant. That is just what what is in here? I mean, I've gone this far. I might as well look. Oh, dear lady, take that. Really? Really? Let me guess, they gave you this. It was free, wasn't it? It was a free sample. Mm hmm. Awfully big sample, don't you think? That's like drug dealers handing out bags of dope. That's all this is. This is just as bad as that. This is like a bag of meth. Meth comes in bags, doesn't it? Or is it? What is, never, it doesn't matter. You, you can't be seriously thinking of giving this to your little. Where is your little, by the way? I don't even see a little. Where, you left it with a babysitter? So let me get this straight. You have a little, and you, I guess you just can't be bothered to keep it with you at all times. Do you not do attachment parenting? You know, I'm starting to think maybe you need to give me your address. Here, take that. Actually, no, don't take that. This is mine now. I'm go no, this is mine. You, well, you got it for free. You have no right to complain. I'm going to dispose of that. I guess you can keep the bag. I don't want to touch it anymore. But you can't have the formula. I'm going. I'm going to deal with that. <clears throat> no, no. Take it. I'm all, I'm all upset now. <laughs> Look. I, I, I'm thinking, actually, I need to, to uh, get your address, if you don't mind. Um, because it, there are problems mounting up here. I know we just met, but I believe your problems are more severe than we can handle just chatting here today in this place. Um... Or let me give you my address. Or I could look you up on the internet. Um, let me just look you up on the internet. Because I have a feeling, looking at your eyes right now, you would give me an inaccurate address. You would give me the wrong address. I'm thinking that because I'm very good at reading people. And looking in your eyes, I see a lot of um, inaccuracy. Of course, it's all the preservatives you eat. I can see them floating around in your eyes. I'm very intuitive. Yeah, I would like to have a one-to-one a, a -one chat with you, perhaps in your home, when you feel comfortable. Maybe I could stop by early and go through your garbage. It would be like a surprise inspection. I'm very concerned about your little, almost to the point that I feel it's criminal, and maybe the police need to get involved. Although they did tell me that I need to reevaluate my idea of an emergency. Um, so I'm thinking going through your garbage a few times to gather evidence might be a good idea before I call them. They yelled at me and, and the chief of police 
has this vein that sticks out on his forehead when he yells at me and, and I'm afraid I'm going to make him die. So no, no, no. I'll tell you what, just forget, just disregard all that. Just forget that. No, we're fine. We're fine. You can pay by credit card, right? Okay. That, no, that's actually perfect. Um, I, I, I do many things to relax. I, I don't feel that I'm an uptight person. I, I am here. I'm, I was put here on this earth to help people like you who clearly need my services. Um, but let me write down my number. Here, do you have a piece of paper? Let me write it on my, on my little pad here. I'm going to give you my name. And I'm going to give you my phone number. Okay. I want you to take this, okay? Hold on. Are you more trustworthy? Look at me. Look at me. You've been eating applesauce with preservatives in it. I can tell by the corners of your eyes. Here, don't eat that anymore, okay? I want you to call me when you need applesauce as well. I can hook you up. I make my own, of course, as decent people would. We need to have some intensive therapy sessions. Um, you need mommy training. No offense. A lot of mommies do. Oh, you've had other children? Well, clearly you learn nothing from it. So you definitely need some mommy training. Maybe it will sink in and there might be some hope for this little. Do you remember your child's name or? Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, well, good for you. You remembered, you remembered the little's name. That's good. Um, I don't suppose you remember how old it is. Oh, okay. Well, there might still be hope. I don't know. I mean, if, you know, three weeks. I mean, it's basically a lost cause at that point, but we'll try. Ugh. I feel itchy. Suddenly, I feel very itchy. Oh, that's better. That's so much better. Whew. It's hot in here. It's not hot. See, after a while, I find that preservatives sort of seep into my skin a little bit. Do you ever feel that way? Like after you eat fake food, which I imagine consists of about 90% of your diet on a good day? Well, when I'm forced to be around preservatives, it, it causes a heat rash in me. It makes me break out in a rash. Um, and I have to remove as many articles of clothing, especially the synthetics, so that I'm just down to the things I'll lose myself. Um, that's much, much better. <sighs> I don't know how you do it. I guess you guys just build up an immunity to it after a while. Mm hmm. I notice you haven't touched your water. You know, it's going to help clear that skin up if you would just drink some reverse ionized water that's been filtered organically. You don't need to know. The worst thing you could do your, for yourself is drink bottled water. Oh, you take it to yoga? <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? I bet you do it too, don't you? Yes, yes. Everyone does yoga now. I bet you thought I'd be impressed. I'm not, actually. Um, I know you don't know this. Um, you know, it's nothing personal, but, you know, yoga is actually, it's, it's, nobody does yoga anymore. Not seriously, like real yoga. No, it's been commercialized and, and put out there to the point that it's actually not even beneficial anymore. It actually causes cancer. Yeah. And it's not so much the activity. It's the things that people think go along with it, like yoga pants, like I notice you're wearing. When you're not doing yoga, why are you? Never mind. Those those pants, those clothes, are full of synthetic materials. They are full of carcinogens, and you're putting that stuff on your skin every day as you trot off to do your yoga. See, I don't do yoga anymore. I gave it up years ago. I actually now only practice a thing called noga, which I'm sure you don't know anything about. So it's it's. I'm sure you've never heard of it. It's very obscure. Yes, it's very spiritual. It's very complicated. I'm not even going to try to explain Noga to you because you wouldn't understand it. Uh, 
you know, maybe maybe after our intensive training and you, you learn a few things about being a mommy, we might try to do some uh, some uh, introductory lessons on Noga, but only if I feel that you can handle it intellectually. I, I just I have to get a feel for your IQ first. I am very smart. I'm incredibly intelligent, and I can understand Noga perfectly, but a lot of people are not capable of it, and I just have to assess your ability to process Noga before we get into that. The most important thing at this point, though, we have to keep our priorities straight. The most important thing is your little. So you have my phone number, and I will go, I will go get your plates of toxins, and we will bring them out. Now I can't, I can't really help the stuff they pile on here. Of course, like I said, I'm going to scrape the spaghetti off. Yeah, it's going in the garbage before I come out with it, um, along with this can of disgusting poison here. Um, but I'm going to sit down with you and we're going to enjoy watching you eat your eggplant for the first time. And I can't wait to see the look on your face when you realize you've been wrong about allergies all this time. So I'm going to go put in your orders and you guys can talk amongst yourselves while I'm gone. That's okay. And then we come back, we will resume our discussion of the things in life that really matter, like being a mommy. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. I'm so glad that you chose to came in this to come in this place today. And I will be back shortly with your food. <laughs>